What's up, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast presented by Windows 11. And we are here to talk schedule, which was just released by the NFL. We know what we have long known, who the Falcons were going to play and where, Mm -hmm. but not the when. The win has now been unveiled for weeks one through 18. We have the preseason slate. We know exactly how things are going to be laid out here. So in the spirit of really good radio and podcasting, I'm going to read from a list. Oh, go okay? ahead. Yeah. Just, like, there we go. just to start it out there, for those of you that don't have a second screen, which you should, this video on YouTube on like your 85-inch plasma, is, is, is that plasma what still have? a thing? I don't know. I don't know. Something. Don't think Any, so don't think so uh <laughs> led TV. or yeah <laughs> something anyway put it up big and then have a second screen on the schedule for reference after i read this thing off but basically they have the preseason slate that starts at the lions at the jets home against the jaguars and then they have uh the the regular season they have nine home games they have eight road games in uh, including playing the entire nfc west so here we go they start week one at home against the saints then at the rams at the seahawks Home against the Browns, at the Bucks, 49ers home, Bengals away, Panthers home, Chargers home, at Carolina Panthers on a Thursday night. That one's going to be a fun one. Uh, followed by home against the Bears in week 11. Week 12 is at Washington. Week 13, home against Pittsburgh. Then the bye. Took me a long time to say that word. Yeah. And then in week 15 at New Orleans. Week 16 at Baltimore. Home against Arizona. Home against Tampa Bay. If you couldn't re- remember that again, just head on over to the website, check it out. Um, and basically, we're here to kind of break this schedule down, right? That now we know the exact order of how they're going to play these teams. And uh, I guess instant reaction here, guys. Tori, what are your first thoughts on this schedule, kind of seeing it all play out right here in front of you? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's really interesting to look at i think schedule release in general is a very interesting day Mm -hmm. um and i i know that people are really excited about it and as you should be it you should be excited about it but to me schedule release is not really a big as big of a deal as what i think many think it is because when you're looking at schedule release it's exciting to know when and where you're going who you're playing when um but it's not the time to count the W's and the L's and and to really like get into the nitty gritty of prediction Mm -hmm. because I have an issue. I, and I feel like I've said this on the podcast before. I have a problem with predictions. Like I think predicting things is so stupid and (laughs) because it's just like one of those things where it's like, you can try and predict all day long, but no one knows what the heck's going on. I think we, I said that in the draft. It's like Mm -hmm. we can go and make as many mock drafts as what we want to make, but no one knows how it's actually going to shake out on draft night. Same thing with season. Same thing with schedule release. It's like, we can look at this all day long and be like, oh yeah, you're playing this person then. You don't have a bye week until here. At the end of the day, it's how prepared this team is to actually play their opponents. And with the NFL being how it is, especially in the last couple of years, we have seen where anybody can be anyone on any given Thursday Saturday, Sunday, Monday, any of it. Like, anyone can be anybody at any time. And so that's why I'm kind of anti-predictions when it comes to schedule release day. Though I do know it's exciting, and everyone should be excited. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at this slate, I just think now you can kind of see how the Falcons' fall and winter is going to play out, right? Because they have so much roster turnover heading into it that my natural thought is, how are they going to start? How are they going to use that preseason to kind of get going? Chris, especially because they have a new quarterback, Matt Ryan, obviously in, in Indianapolis, not a part of this schedule as an opponent or obviously as the home team's quarterback. When you look at the, at the first section there, uh, Saints at Rams, at Seahawks, home ag- against the Browns. Obviously, you have the preseason. How key is that for the for the for all these new contributors um, to kind of hit the ground running? Do you think it's possible to start hot even against that section of, of opposition with so many new guys? Yeah, I think starting hot can also look different ways. I don't think starting hot necessarily – not saying that if you start 0-4, obviously that would – be disappointing and could you know hinder momentum going into later in the season but I think starting hot can mean this is going to sound weird but I've I've heard people say this phrase before but like there's a way to lose a game versus like losing and versus if you lose like 40 to nothing or you lose 
um, 25 to 24 or 27 to 23 or or you played really hard at the end of, of a game right mm-hmm. so there's a way to to build momentum within the first four games and I think there's this team is brand new there's a lot of new faces mm-hmm. all over so it'll be through the first four games you'll see are these guys as bought in as guys last season were because it seemed like last season guys were bought in guys were playing till the end of games and playing hard they believed in what was happening now you bring in a bunch of new faces you lost a staple at quarterback our guy's still going to be bought in and you'll learn that through the first four games which I think could arguably be the toughest part of their schedule Mm -hmm. yeah and and we're going to get into tough stretches we are going to get into some tough teams that they play outside of the NFC South we're going to take a look at their bye week and not make bold predictions. I promise you that. But before we get to all that stuff, a big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11. I love the logo. The official (laughs) operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. So my first reaction, and I said it as I was reading over the schedule, is by week, week 14. So long. That seems so late. So far away. <laughs> that seems late. Now, last year, they, they kind of had to have it early because right. they played London. the New York Jets in London. Mm-hmm. They had a bye week, so that would have been week six, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That seems too early. Week 14 seems too late. like a long time away. <laughs> now, I'm sure right before we get there, everybody will say that it's a great time to have the bye because that's what they always say. But it seems too late, right? It just seems... I mean, there's only four games left after that one. Yeah. I mean, I think... I'm all about the bye week being right in the middle of the season. You know? Yeah, right? It, it's just, I think that we should collectively, as the league, just say that everyone's off in one weekend. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. just everybody is done. Everybody's just going to take the weekend off and that be it. I'm all about work life balance and chillaxing <laughs> when you can. I kind of dig that, yeah, actually. Right? That's yeah, fair. I yeah, think, yeah. I just think it makes sense because I do think that according to where your bye week falls dictates how the games before and the games after kind of work out because these are guys who are literally putting their bodies on the line every single week it's I I feel like people are like oh well they're paid to do this well yeah they are paid to do this but they're also still humans they're really big strong fast humans but they're still humans and they're gonna get tired and they're gonna have some bumps (laughs) they're gonna get tired they're gonna have some bumps and bruises so I'm very like I don't know if I would rather have a bye week early like how it was last year or bye week late how it is this coming year because both suck in my opinion like you know like both both bye weeks being so far on one side is tough and I I think about like the first few like the first two months of the season those are like what Chris is saying those are some tough games to have to play right off the bat and so you think you have that chunk of games in the first two months and then you got to go until December until you can just get a break that's tough yeah I think though I think our early bye week would probably I'd probably prefer because I think in terms of like rookies and I think specifically point. for rookies it gives you a chance to take a breath yeah and you know recalibrate and like okay it's like you're ripping and running but they're <laughs> ripping and running for 13 <laughs> weeks time. so yeah I think the universal bye week we should send that to the commissioner yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm a call him up hey yeah. man if you um, could just type that up because yeah, there yeah. is I think there is some advantage of i mean you could also say on the back end like you could have momentum from a win but i think there's some advantage if you have some lingering injuries which yeah. everyone does in the league you can get taped up you can get stuff right get your body right and feel rejuvenated and you could be coming off you could be playing a team who's coming off having all those injuries so there is some advantage so yeah, maybe tori t- needs to do. maybe i'll <laughs> i'll send in my application to be commissioner in 2029 um let's do it you heard it here first another thing Think of the amount of rookies that are going to be playing for the Falcons this year. I was just year. thinking that. Yeah. How many games they play in college and how many weeks they have until the bye week and then to tack on four more games after that. Yeah. That That's really a shock to the system for some of these rookies who are going to be playing a lot. We know that. That's just how this roster is constructed at the current time. That's that's a really interesting part and it's something that I know Arthur Smith talked about last year too when he was talking about the reps that Kyle Pitts was taking Jalen Mayfield was taking I I think I remember talking at one point to Jalen Mayfield and him towards the end of the season and there was still like another two months left of the season and he was like yeah I've already played more this year than I did in the last like two years of college like and that's kind of 
the that's kind of how it was especially with the covid year too yeah. and some guys didn't play i mean that's i feel like that's a really interesting part of this too that maybe not a, as many people are talking about yeah and, and not only that but all these um first year guys that they've been doing the pre-def process for mm -hmm. the the whole time so there hasn't been any break and you talk about the big break between years one and, and two the uh, these guys don't get that and the, i know that we're only talking about one week for the buy but when it's also a whole you know four day stretch off and they have a quote unquote mini buy they, they they play carolina on a thursday night on amazon prime that's the falcons only primetime game that's not a shock right that normally right. primetime games you can have a max of five those games generally go to the more marquee teams the teams that have been in the playoffs um, especially recently that's not the falcons at this point if they want though if they want more primetime games and i'm sure fans want more primetime games at home those games are fun those games are live but you need to do a little bit better and then you get that that uh that privilege kind of in that following year when you're looking at this and I was going to say rough stretches, but just stretches where you think maybe they can make hay or maybe, um, or maybe they're really going to have to be ready for a two or three or four game stretch here. Um, there are some kind of different options uh, based upon where you look. Um, does anything stand out? And just as you guys are looking at it, I'll just go first, maybe take the easiest one. Cause are you going the first week? No. And on because that's i literally think the first week all the way to like week six is a tough stretch and i know that's what chris was talking about earlier right yeah i mean i was gonna start it when they played at tampa and then at, at home against san francisco and then uh, yeah. and then at the Bengals. but it's funny because when we talk about tough stretches we're, we're talking about like what a team did last year so i'm right. looking at the afc champion right, right right maybe not what they are this year that's why don't hold this against us <laughs> as we move through, but that one seems difficult, you know, although I'm going to argue against myself here. San Francisco has probably a, a, a first year starter in, yeah. in, in, in them. And you don't know how the, how the, how the Bengals are going to come back. But to me, that looks tough. Yeah. Uh, you guys think the start of the year could be a little difficult. Yeah. I think, Kind of to go away from your question because I was, That's <laughs> I fine. Got, yeah, I'm like, I got to answer this before. I think that, but to answer, I think like the first stretch of games are tough. Like right until you get, like Tori was saying, when you get to Carolina, I think it's mm -hmm. tough. But I think to kind of turn it around, I think the easiest stretch or I guess relatively easy is when you look at 10 to 13 yep. right before the bye week. The If you look at that and we're looking at last year's teams, obviously, and, and on paper, what, what teams look like those are the teams that you think like the Falcons could, could get some wins there. And, you know, you, you look at the Steelers, you think, you know, they might be the lowest team of that division or, you know, the bears, Washington, who knows they have Carson Wentz. So I think that's the stretch where you look at and they, and you say they can get some wins there. Mm -hmm. But also I just think in general, when you draw the AFC North mm -hmm. and the NFC West yeah, right now, tough. like tough. it's, <laughs> it's That's just pretty tough. hard. It's just yeah. tough. Like you when you when you have the Ravens, the Cardinals, the Chargers, Steelers, the Browns, <laughs> the Rams on your mm -hmm. schedule. There's not a lot of games where you can look at and no game is a gimme, like Tori said, especially right. last season where teams were beating each other. It weird things were happening last year. Right. So weird oh, yeah. things could happen this year. But when you draw those teams on paper, you, you don't look at that and say there are a lot of gimme. So mm -mm. I think the entire schedule is, is, is really tough and that week right before the bye week, I think they have some games there though that look winnable on paper not that others don't mm -hmm. look winnable but sure. more winnable and i was looking at it and i was going to mention the the fact that that they had to play the, the entire nfc west because they have to travel all the way to the west coast twice and they do that in weeks two and three and they play back to back on the west coast that would seem likely if we were to follow a, a, a pattern back from 2019 they, they played houston and then they played the the cardinals and they just kept going west that could be in theory an opportunity for them to stay on the west coast yeah. maybe i mean i think that works works for me in my schedule if yeah wants to know. i mean if you want us <laughs> to just hang out in los angeles and seattle for a whole right yeah i've days. never been to seattle so i'm i'm cool with that no i think that makes sense Mm -hmm. um it'll be interesting to see kind of how that does shake out i think that it makes i i said this it makes sense to mm -hmm. just stay out there that way because you, you think about it you play on sunday you come back on let's say sunday night monday morning whenever it is that you come back and then immediately turn around and have to go back 
and lose four hours and I mean or gain four hours or whatever it is yeah just just stay out there just make it just easier that way but having to I I was going to focus so much on playing the NFC West because they have the Mm -hmm. Super Bowl champs in the Rams they have the 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 NFC runners up in the 49ers but playing the AFC North what Chris just said kind of sparked something that yeah that's a pretty tough uh, four team division from top to bottom but the way that they play football you know, I mean, not every team is the same as they were five years ago, but that's known as a very physically taxing, demanding, hit you under the chin strap type of division yeah. that, that that could play an impact too. It's going to yeah. be some physical football there. And I think that division is better than the NFC West from, from yeah. top to bottom, yes. like significantly better. I, <laughs> I think uh-huh. the worst team and that if you, I, who's the worst team at the division, the Steelers. Yeah, maybe and right. the Steelers and the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think I'd probably take the Steelers over the, the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. So I think you the you have to. <laughs> there's some great quarterbacks in that division. They have Kenny Pickett. They also have Mr. Trubisky over there. But most importantly, like you said, it's physical, and they got some physical guys this year. So you know, and they're and, and it's not like the Falcons aren't a physical team. But in terms of the wear and tear on mm-hmm. your body that we talked about in a week 14 bye week, yeah, the AFC North is <laughs> trouble. I mm-hmm. I think too, like it's. <laughs> I go back to kind of this is a little bit off the wall and this analogy may not even work. But when Terry Fontenot said, you know, we're going to take it on the chin this year when he was talking about the salary cap and having the dead money of Matt Ryan, Julio and kind of just tacking all that dead money on. He's like, we're going to take it on the chin this year to a certain degree. I feel this way about the first, the the rookies and the second year guys kind of looking at the schedule. It's like you're going to take it on the chin with some of these guys, like with some of these teams, because that's how they play. And that's kind of the pedigree of which they play with. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm saying, but like you're going to take it on the chin. And I would like to think that because the Falcons are taking it on the chin with the salary cap this year, taking on the chin with the schedule, I do think it sets you up for more prosperity down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's good for these rookies. I think it's good for even these second year guys to get this level of physicality and so that it's like welcome to the nfl it's a moment you're welcome to the nfl moment almost turns into an entire season right, and it's yeah. like get ready because these two draft classes specifically are the direction of which this organization is going in so the quicker that they can get live reps good live reps under their belt the better the falcons are going to be in 2024 and 2025 yeah i also like to say too i think well, not I think, but the Falcons' first round pick, he he'll be rested. So he he hasn't played since October. So yeah. Drake hasn't played since October. So in terms of the the long bye week, the Falcons lucked up with the first round pick because he he's fresh. He he did <laughs> he's a, ready to go. Yeah, he did a <laughs> he did a pro day. He did a private workout. His family says the rest he needed. So he'll be ready to go. <laughs> and he's physical. And he lowers his shoulder. So that's why they got if him. You, yeah, if you turn on his highlights, he's lowering his shoulder. Mm-hmm. So he'll be ready for. All of that, I think they got a guy there who will feed into that. Love and Kyle, it. too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you want to get to where the Falcons are trying to go, you got to measure up physically. And, and Arthur Smith talks so much about building that, building that physical culture, being able to, yeah, like maybe take it on the chin, but also give it back. And yeah. I think that we're going to learn through this schedule a lot about who the Falcons have, and then who they need to go get, right? Yes. Who is a true foundational player of these last two drafts? I don't think they're necessarily committed to anything mm-hmm. th- 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 except for continuing to add good players and to keep trying to add good players, knowing sometimes you're going to swing, sometimes you're going to miss. And I, I think that when you look at this slate, it's going to be a great test for them moving forward, no matter what their record ends up being, just because they're going to be tested by all these different things. Mm-hmm. While they aren't traveling as much as you'd think by, by by dealing with the NFC West, especially if they end up staying on the West Coast, they're, they're, they're traveling 15,648 miles. That, that would be cut down if they stayed on the West Coast. That's not a lot, Mm-mm. but by, by uh, relative standards, I think uh, the uh, Seattle Seahawks travel the most because they're on the far stretch of the country. But I just think, I think, it, I think it's a good test overall for the Falcons to see where they are and where they need to go and 
who is the type of player that they want to have around. Mm -hmm. I think you look at a Drake London type, uh, you know, Kyle Pitts is one of those. He's going to go hard on every play. They're trying to build an an offensive and defensive lines that way. Uh, Let's find these things out, to your point, during this season, and then you can say, all right, here's where we are. Here's where we need to go. It's not that far. It's a great distance. And who can we keep from all these prove-it deals? Uh, Arthur Smith was on uh, 92.9 earlier this week, and he's saying once this salary cap opens up, then we can reward those guys who committed to us in 2022. He was talking about uh, Lorenzo Carter, mm-hmm. right? Is that if, if, if he goes out and, and balls out, the Falcons will be more excited to reward a guy like that. And I think that that's what you're trying to uh, figure out. Now we know the order of which they're going to go. The fact they have to play a full college season before they can take a <laughs> chill pill. In a, bowl, some, in a bowl game. In a bowl game, <laughs> and yeah. A, and a bowl game, um, you know, as they kind of move through this thing. But look, it's hard. But I don't think the Falcons signed up to do easy, Mm-mm. right? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Also, I don't think, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we should just write off this season, like right, because it's like a, it looks difficult on paper. I think we've been around them. Uh, and it's when I say them, I mean Arthur and Terry, and enough to know that you know they really believe. They don't believe in throwing in the towel. Like they're right. not looking. They're not looking to 2023 i think you know in saying that they've talked about wanting guys to come in because they know they have that money and to reward guys and all that but that doesn't mean that they're not trying to win games like they're trying to win these games they're trying to make the playoffs they're not like arthur has said many times and and i think he said it enough and we've seen it enough we mm-hmm. saw it last year enough to know that it's not just coach speak or lip service like they're yeah. trying to and win they won seven last year yeah yeah they weren't expected to win seven well you last think year. about right. it this way too yeah. i mean if you don't want to be competitive now you don't keep jake matthews you don't keep grady jarrett right. mm-hmm. like the, those guys want to win like exactly. you don't want to waste grady jarrett's years yeah. <laughs> a player of that caliber the yeah. falcons resigned him they resigned him and he stayed here because he wants to win games here and I think that goes, like, to your point. It's like, they're not going to throw in the towel, towel. Like, even in games that they lost last year, I do think they were they showed signs of the physicality of which Arthur Smith wants them to play with, the toughness that he wants them to play with. And so I think, like, going back to, I think, what you said right off the top of the podcast, like, taking, no matter the outcome, but taking building blocks from every single game and being like, okay, this is who we are. This is who we want to be. Like, continue being that. Um, so yeah, but uh, to your point, like, yeah, Grady Jarrett didn't want to lose games. He, right. Like he, they wouldn't have re-signed him. They could have traded him. They could yeah. have packaged him and sent him on his way for draft picks. They didn't do that. They wanted to keep him here. Mm-hmm. That to me is telling that they want to be as competitive as they can be while building this thing. Yeah. And if, if, if they can get in more situations like where they thrived in terms of one score games, and then they can find that fire. Now that fire is not. I mean, yeah, it it has to be found and earned and then manipulated and, you know, done over and over and over again, th- th- those type of one score wins. But there are a lot of guys who know that they can win this way. And if you get into a tough fourth quarter fight, you might end up on the right side of it. You might start hot. You might look at yourself because nobody expected the Falcons last year to be on December 1st, even saying the word postseason, right? right? But somehow they found their way to be in it. So can they find their way to be in it? That's going to be a fascinating thing. And who's going to contribute to this effort in a significant way? That's what we're going to be looking for as we head towards the rookie mini camp, which is at the end of this week and on towards training camp and the offseason program. And that's going to be fun to watch. Um, The difficult part about that is not being able to watch it oh. <laughs> with our good pal, Chris Rim. Uh, Dang it, I'm going to cry. Uh, but nonetheless, we I, I'm sure he hates me even bringing this up. But uh, nonetheless, we you know at least wanted to remind everyone that uh, Chris Rim is moving on to a little paper called the, called the New York Times. A little paper. <laughs> Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's, he's moving on to a, a great opportunity. And uh, I know he was only here for about 12 months. But, I mean, just go spend like a couple days and read the profiles on – Kyle Pitts and Cordero Patterson and Drake London. There's a fantastic one out there. How else can I embarrass him? Um, <laughs> I'm going to miss all the fruity drinks we consumed. <laughs> if anyone, some, everybody should know that Chris, is, Chris and I became friends initially because we bonded over neither of us liking any like hard 
like drink that didn't taste good. You know, if yeah. there wasn't a little fruit or a little sweetness in it, we were like, nah. A little bit of lemonade. Yeah, Lemon or juice. lemonade. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's going to be tough. And then I'm not going to cry on the podcast. You're, <laughs> I'm not going to cry on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we've had a great a great year, I yeah, think. Yeah, for and sure. I, I just think about, like, this collective group, and I love how much we bounce off of each other and how I think we complement each other, and Chris is – a third of that so and i i I think it was cool how 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 quickly the 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 falcons fans really seem to engage with your stories and some of the things and it seems like uh that that you've gotten a a chance to interact with a lot of good fans over the course of it i think you 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 got recognized too when you were out with with your oh yeah 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 i got (laughs) yeah that was good that was good i mean it was (laughs) Yeah, one time I was out to eat somewhere. If the the waiter's watching, if you're out there, <laughs> thank you. I mean, it was it was cool, but I mean, I wish we were. I've been my girlfriend for a while now, like four years. So it was kind of like she was kind of like, oh, I got to deal with this ego. But basically, I was, <laughs> I was out to eat, and the waiter recognized me. I was with my girlfriend. He was like, "Man, you do great stuff for the Falcons," so you know. Sweet. And I was kind of like, ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah, okay. And then my girlfriend was like, "Oh my god!" Like, <laughs> so it's like, gosh, his head just bloomed he, up. Exactly. Yeah. So it was cool, but yeah, it's been fun. Everyone's cool. This is a cool market my first time in the south in atlanta it's been it's a great city i love not having to shovel and Mm -hmm. do all that and meeting y'all and oh yeah chris sam is is our producer back there (laughs) in the cut you know all those those people the 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 men and women who don't get to be on camera they're all great and talented and make us look good so just a great team and Hopefully, I built a lot of friends here. I, hopefully, I did build a lot of friends here, and hopefully, we stay connected. So, yeah, and also, yeah, we uh, you, with the preseason and everything, like, yeah, you know, the week two of the preseason, yeah, everybody's sleeping on Chris's floor. <laughs> You're t- Arthur, I, no, Terry, I call, I me, called, Tori. Yeah, I already called the couch. <laughs> yeah, everybody else Dang can have it. the floor. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm bringing my own sleeping bag. <laughs> All right, well, we could talk about this forever and embarrass the heck out of him. Uh, But we're going to go ahead and sign off right now, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And definitely hit us up on our social channels in the YouTube comments about your thoughts on this schedule, your thoughts on our thoughts on this schedule. It's going to be a very interesting year Mm -hmm. for the Falcons as we move forward to see how this whole thing plays out. Plenty more to discuss on this podcast and, uh, you know, on the website and everywhere else that you can find Atlanta Falcons content. Uh, most notably on atlantafalcons.com. So you know what to do right now. Five-star rating, five-star review. Oh, and subscribe to Falcons Audible, please. Those guys rip. Make sure you check out all the schedule release content Falcons are putting out. Heck yeah, man. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Lots of it to do. And uh, there's going to be some awesome home opponents. Steelers, Bears. Yeah. Tons of good stuff. Go check out a game. It's super fun. Um, So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon.